Welcome to our Resolve Solutions. In this video, let us talk about regulatory affairs. The Indian pharmaceutical industry is a success story providing employment for a million and ensuring that essential drugs at affordable prices are available to the various population of this subcontinent, according to Richard Chester. Before discussing regulatory fires, let us see drug development and approval process in a nutshell. It starts with the preclinical testing and the clinical research or clinical trials, the data analysis and post-marketing surveillance. In preclinical testing, the laboratory synthesis of the molecule will be done and drug molecule is tested on animals. The data is submitted to the regulatory authority in the form of investigational new drug. If the regulatory authority approves the drug to be tested in human beings, then the clinical trials that is phase 1, phase 2 and phase 3 will be conducted, the data are biostatistically analyzed and submitted to the regulatory authority in the form of new drug application that is NTA. If the regulatory authority approves the drug to be marketed, then the drug will enter into the market. After that, the post-marketing surveillance or phase 4 trials will be done. Usually, it takes 10 to 15 years to a drug to enter into the market. Out of many molecules, only few will pass all these phases and enter into the market. A drug becomes a medicine when a product license is granted. Regulatory fires is a profession developed from the desire of governments to protect public health by controlling the safety and efficacy of products in areas including pharmaceuticals, veterinary medicines, medical devices, cosmetics and complementary medicines and by the companies. So regulatory fires plays a major role in submitting the data to the concerned regulatory authority of a country where the pharmaceuticals or veterinary medicines, these animal medicines or medical devices or the cosmetics has to be marketed. Regulatory fires is a profession which acts as an interface between the pharmaceutical industry and drug regulatory authorities across the world. It mainly involved in registration of drug products in respect to countries prior to their marketing. So if our pharmaceutical industry want to release a particular medicine into a particular country, the regulatory fires department of that particular company has to contact the regulatory authority of that particular country and has to submit the data and has to fulfill the requirements of that particular regulatory authority. If the regulatory authority approves the drug molecule, then the drug has to be marketed in that particular country. The pharmaceutical industry is well organized, systematic and compliant to inter national regulatory standards for manufacturing of chemical and biological drugs for human and veterinary consumption as well as medical devices, traditional herbs and cosmetics. The regulatory fires department is an important part of the organizational structure of pharmaceutical companies. Internally, it lies at the interface of drug development, manufacturing, marketing and clinical research. So the regulatory fires department is involved in each and every stage of development of new medicine even after post-marketing activities activities with authorized medical products. Now let us see the historical overview of regulatory fires. So there were multiple tragedies occurred because of the medicines you or the misuse of medication during early 19th century. The tragedies include sulfonamide elixir tragedy, vaccine tragedy and thalidomide tragedy which have resulted in increasing number of legislation of drug product quality, safety and efficacy. If we observe the thalidomide disaster detected in 1961, thalidomide Thalidomide was used by the pregnant woman for morning sickness and as a result, the baby is born with induced teratogenicity that is phocomelia. After observing all these tragedies, certain regulations were introduced across the globe. The drug industry in India was very primitive stage till 20th century. Most of the drugs were imported from foreign countries. Government passed the Poison Act 1919 to check and hold the control on cheap drugs available in the market. The Poison Act was followed by Dangerous Drug Act 1930, which includes the regulation of cultivation, manufacturing, possession, and trade of opium. As a result, acts and rules were passed in India. In 1940, Drugs and Cosmetic Act was passed. This act regulates the manufacturing, distribution, import, and sale of allopathic, homeopathic, unani, and siddha drugs. Drugs and Cosmetics Act 1945. This act regulates manufacturing of Ayurvedic drugs for sale only, not for consumption and use or possession. In 1948, Pharmacy Act was passed. 
In 1955, Drugs and Magic Remedies Act was passed. This rule regulates the advertisement of drugs in India. Drug Price Control Order 1955. It was introduced to control high price of medicines. Indian Patent Act 1970. It serves as the basis for patent protection in India. During 1980 and 1990, the Indian industry has started investing in, in process of developing actual pharmaceutical ingredients (APA) and created production infrastructure for the same during 1990 and 2000 a rapid expansion in domestic market has observed in pharmaceutical industry the companies have started entering in research and development fields during 2000 and 2010 this period is considered to be the innovation and research era during these years innovative research activities patenting of drug formulas processing indication as well as mergers of the companies was started patent amendment act 2005 indian government brought out the patent ordinances 2004 to address the issues related to the patent in the country which was later replaced by the indian patent act 2005 the, the new act brought some crucial changes in the legal regime on patent protection across the country the indian government passed certain compulsory licenses such licenses are granted for manufacturing and and export of drug products now let us see the role of regulatory affairs department in the pharmaceutical industry regulatory affairs plays a crucial role in the pharmaceutical industry and is involved in all stages of drug development and also after drug approval and marketing throughout the drug development stages the pharmaceutical companies have to abide by an array of strict rules and guidelines in order to ensure safety and efficacy of the drug in human beings the role of regulatory affairs professionals is to act as a liaison with the regulatory agencies preparation of organized and ensure adherence with compliance with all the applicable CGMP ICA GCP GLP regulations and laws providing expertise and regulatory intelligence in translating regulatory requirements in pr- into practical workable plans regulatory affairs plays a crucial role in industry and is involved in all stages of drug development and also in drug approval and marketing pharmaceutical companies use all the data that has been observed during the discovery and developmental stages in order to resist the drug and thus marketing the drug drug regulatory affairs professional plays an important role in each phase of drug development and post marketing activities so this means the regulatory affairs department involved in all the stages of drug development and the data has to be submitted to the regulatory authorities the concerned regulatory authorities will review all the data submitted by the regulatory affairs department of that particular pharmaceutical company and if the data fulfills the requirements of the regulatory guidelines of that particular country drug molecule or the medical device or cosmetics will be released into the market of that particular country thus regulatory affairs department plays a very crucial role in drug dollar development process and post marketing activities of the drug molecule the regulatory affairs professionals of the company have to abide the strict rules and guidelines through the drug development process to ensure drug and efficacy of drugs in human beings the regulatory affairs department also take part in drug development marketing concept and also crucial requirement to approve packaging advertisement of drug or drug product before it is used commercially so in this process the regulatory affairs department plays very key role now let us see the responsibility of regulatory affairs professional the responsibility of regulatory affairs professional is to ensure that their companies are complying with all of the system policies and laws pertaining to their business working with federal state local regulatory agencies and with their staff on specific issues distressing their commerce that is working with government agencies regulatory affairs professionals advise their companies on various aspects of regulatory affairs and particularly the climate that would affect proposed action regulatory affairs professionals job is to keep an eye over the ever changing legislation in all the countries particularly in those countries where the company have their interest to register regulatory affairs professional advise either legally or technically at all stages and help companies to save a lot of resources money time in drug development and marketing 
In any organization, the main responsibility of regulator affairs professional is to present the registration documentation to regulator agencies to follow up all the process and discussion to obtain and maintain marketing authorization for the concerned product. Now let us see the regulatory landscape and product development. The regulatory strategy and development plan should be reviewed and updated on a regular basis during the product development process. Now let us see the steps in regulatory landscape and product development. In step 1, properly classify your healthcare product that is a drug or a biologic or a medical device or a combination product so that you know which regulatory path to take. If in doubt, contact the appropriate regulatory body to confirm the product type and how your product is regulated. Step 2. Identify the claim of your healthcare product so that you know what type of studies to conduct to support the claim and your product label. For instance, changing your claim may change the medical device classification which can lead to different regulatory oversight. Step 3. Determine your healthcare market. This will guide you to the requirements that are specific to, to each jurisdiction. It is important to identify jurisdiction specific requirements upfront so that they can be included early in the product development plan. Step 4. Develop your regulatory strategy by identifying the specific regulatory requirements as well as the possible pathways to take. A thorough understanding of these requirements will guide the development of your regulatory strategy. Step 5. Establish a healthcare product development plan so that the product requirements can be translated into action. That is, who does what and by when and, and for how much. Such plans should be established collaboratively in, with input from different functional groups. It should include key milestones, critical paths and periodic reviews for go and no go decisions and be updated periodically. Step 5. Execute a product development plan. It is a subject matter expert who possesses the knowledge of the investigational product who must carry out the corresponding manufacturing, quality, regulatory, non-clinical and clinical programs as well as any coordination with third parties. Step 7. Execute the clinical plan. If a clinical program is required in support of the licensing application, these studies should be conducted according to good clinical practices, GCP and country specific requirements such as ethical approvals and necessary regulatory approvals or conducting the clinical trials. Often it helps to have pre-submission meeting with the regulatory agency prior to submitting a clinical trial application in order to address specific issue. Step 8. Collect your data for regulatory submission. Once the data from the product design and manufacturing quality non-clinical and clinical programs are available, these data and reports should be collected for inclusion in the regulatory submission. Step 9. Collate your regulatory submission according to the applicable regulatory requirements specific to your type of submission. Ensure the completeness of the submission and anticipate the resources needed to address the questions from the agency during the submission review. For an innovative healthcare product, it is often recommended to have a pre-submission meeting with your agency prior to the submitting the licensing application. Step 10. Ensure post-marketing compliance make sure to fulfill all the necessary post-marketing obligations. So this is the flowchart of regulatory landscape and product development. So now let us see the quality management system and regulatory compliance management. It includes electronic data management, standard operating procedures management, that is SOP management, regulatory submission management, ECTD management, CAPA management, change control, deviation management, Complaints Management, Audit Management, Learning and Training Management. Now let us see Manufacturing and Regulatory Complaints. Manufacturing Complaints comprises the legal, technical and corporate requirements, regulations and practices manufacturers must comply with in order to produce and market products. The risk of non-complaints has become an increasingly major concern in recent years, particularly for manufacturers with operations in multiple countries and jurisdictions. This development has been further highlighted by the increasing role of governmental regulatory bodies in industry sectors along with the emergence of global standards to address the increasingly global nature of manufacturing. The core mandate guiding FDA regulatory oversight is consumer safety. As a result, the FDA has defined good manufacturing practices for both device and drug manufacturers that indicate the necessary measures that must be taken to ensure 
the quality systems and processes are in place to consistently produce safe quality products. Therefore, manufacturers in these sectors seek a manufacturing certificate of complaints indicating that they meet GMP, that is good manufacturing practices. Meeting the challenge of manufacturing reg regulatory complaints requires establishing a consistent top-down strategy for ensuring complaints across the enterprise. Software developers have responded to this need by creating solutions for managing regulatory complaints within the manufacturing execution systems (MES). For those in manufacturing sectors regulated by FDA, these solutions must be in compliance with the Title 21 CFR Part 11 and Part 820. Part 11 requires pharmaceutical manufacturers, medical device manufacturers, biotech companies, biologics developers, contract research organizations, and other FDA regulated in industries to implement controls. These controls include audits, system validations, audit trials, electronic signatures, and documentation for software and systems involved in, in processing electronic data that are required to be maintained by the FDA predicate rules or used to demonstrate complaints to a predicate rule. Now let us see marketing and advertising. In most product areas where regulatory requirements are imposed, restrictions are also placed upon the claim which can be made for a product on labeling or in advertising. The regulatory fights will take part in development of the product in marketing concepts and is usually required to approve packaging and advertising before it is used commercially. Regulatory Submission Process Let us see the regulatory submission process quickly. Before a new drug or biologic can go to market, a submission must be compiled and filed with all the relevant regulatory agencies to seek a review and ultimately regulatory approval. Review and approval processes include pre-submission meeting, pre-submission activities, administrative review, agency review and sponsor response, activities prior to the agency's decision and finally the decision. Regulatory authorities. So the regulatory authorities may be different in different countries. If the regulatory authorities approve the drug then only the drug can be marketed in that particular country let us see few regulatory authorities throughout the world for example in india it is cdsco central drug standard control organization in us it is united states food and drugs administration us fda in uk it is medicines and healthcare products regulatory agency mhra in Australia, it is Therapeutic Goods Administration TCA. In Canada, it is Health Canada. In Europe, it is European Medicines Agency EMA. And there are many more regulatory bodies you can refer. I'll give you the list in the description. The global regulatory agencies are WHO, World Health Organization, PAHO, Pan American Health Organization, WTO, World Trade Organization, ICH, International Conference on Harmonization, WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization. So these are some of the regulatory bodies across the globe. So what are the job positions in regulatory fires? So the job positions in regulatory fires may be different in different countries and different companies based on their standards. Some of the common job positions in regulatory fires are regulatory fires associate, regulatory fires assistant, regulatory fires head or director, medical information associates, drug inspector or drug controller, drug safety specialist, regulatory food safety scientist, quality operations, quality control or quality assurance associates, regulatory affairs consultant etc so let us see the companies hiring regulatory affairs professionals so there are diversified companies which are hiring regulatory affairs professionals for example pharmaceutical companies medical device manufacturing companies in vitro diagnostics biologics and biotechnology companies veterinary products manufacturing companies cosmetic manufacturers regulatory bodies and contract research organizations that is CROs. Let us see some companies offering regulatory affairs jobs in, in India as well as across the globe. I could mention few but there are many more companies because almost all the companies need to have regulatory affairs department to meet the regulatory guidelines, regulatory requirements to market drug or medical device or a cosmetic product. So this is some information about regulatory affairs. If you feel this video is informative, please like our video. Please comment your question, doubts, queries. Please share it with your friends and please subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching the video. Have a great day and have a great future ahead.